Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Unit 3 of your Grade 12 course. Uh, we've got three little lessons in this unit, uh, and the first one is, is really straightforward. We've got one page of, of a little review, uh, and then on the very next page, uh, some enharmonic work, which is, you I mean, you know what the word enharmonic means already, so this should be pretty straightforward. So, some, some interval review. Remember, an, an interval has two different parts to it. It has the size, which is the number, and it has the quality. Perfect, major, minor, augmented, diminished, okay? And before we get started on this, uh, part of the review in this, doing this review page, um, I don't know if you recall from, from previous years, we have that sort of chart which helps us remember what it is we're doing in terms of finding intervals. So I'm just going to go to the side here, uh, and we're going to make this little chart together. Uh, so you can start with a big wide rectangle, okay, lots of space to work. And then you're going to split it up into four rows, okay? Uh, each row can have three columns. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is because intervals can be either part of the, they can be part of the scale of the lower key, of the lower note. They can be raised or lowered, or in some cases, rare cases, lowered twice out of the key signature. Okay, so first of all, on the left-hand side of this chart, we're going to say diatonic on the second spot down, okay? Diatonic means it fits within the key signature. The upper note is part of the key signature of the lower note, okay? Uh, above, we, if we are raised one semitone, or one half step, below that we're down one semitone, and in very rare cases, we are down two semitones, okay? Now, across the top of the boxes, our intervals are divided into two families. We've got intervals of size 1, 4, 5, and 8. And we also have intervals of size 2, 3, 6, 7, the other ones. Okay. We're going to start with diatonic intervals first because they're the most common, I guess. Diatonic intervals can either be perfect if they're of size 1, 4, 5, 8, or they can be major if they're of size 2, 3, 6, 7. All right. Any intervals, when we're talking about uh, intervals that are up here on top, okay, we want to talk, we're talking about intervals that have been raised out of the key signature, right, and those are always, always, always augmented, okay, you can use an X to, sim to signal the augmented, all right. Uh, we'll do that, P for perfect and plus is the major, okay? Once we get to intervals that have been lowered a half step, then we get into a little bit different things. Any intervals that are um, on this side that can be major can also be minor. So the minor is what goes down here, okay? So we have minor intervals. And with perfect intervals, perfect intervals can never be major or minor. So they automatically go straight to being diminished, a little circle, okay, and then at the very bottom, when in the rare case when intervals are lowered two half steps, when they're of size two, three, six, seven, that's when these intervals become diminished, okay, now, intervals of size one, four, five, eight are never lowered two half steps out of the key signature. They just don't exist. Don't ask me why, it's just that's the way music works. Um, I've always been meaning to look it up, but that's how our, our, uh, our chart works, right? You're always gonna look for whether or not the, the upper note fits within the key signature of the lower note. Okay, so having this chart uh, is really handy. It basically is your cheat sheet for knowing all your intervals. Using this chart as well as, of course, knowing your key signatures. So. We're going to come back to the uh, main screen here. Okay, we're going to do a few of these together. All right, assuming you have this written out somewhere on the side. All right, we'll do a few of these together and I'll let you take the other ones on, uh, on your own. So for the first one, okay, we're looking at the lower note first because we always want to check out, we want to think in the key signature of that lower note. The lower note is A, so we're thinking in the, in the key signature of A major being three sharps. Okay, now when we do this, 
we realize that Fs in this key signature should be sharp. But here we have an F natural. Okay, so this is certainly a sixth, because we say one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. But what kind of sixth is it? If we're going to have a diatonic interval, that should be an F sharp. Okay, since it's not an F sharp, it's an F natural, that the size of this interval has been lowered a half step, right? Which is why this is a minor sixth. You can do a, a minus sign, uh, or you can do, you can write M-I-N. Either way works, okay? So basically, guys, the reason I put this key signature here in brackets is just my, it's my, showing my work, as it were. Okay, you do not have to write down the key signature, but I find it helps to do it just to follow my thinking, okay? So I keep track of where I am. Uh, let's pick another one here. I don't know. How about... I'll do the next one. Why not? Okay. D major. In the key of D major, you know you have two sharps, F sharp, C sharp. Okay. Now, when you look at this interval size, you'll see that it's a seventh. That's easy enough. And the upper note is a C sharp. Do, do we have C sharps in the key of D major? Well, according to our key signature, yes, we do. It's poorly written right there. <laughs> okay. So the kind of seventh that is diatonic, that fits within the key signature, is major. It's not out of the key signature at all. It fits, and so it works. It's major. And let's go with one more, just because. Oh, let's go in the center here. F to B natural. Okay. Um, first, you can see that it's a fourth. That's easy enough. Now, what kind of fourth is this? Well, what kind of fourth should we have? What kind of Bs should we have in the key of F major? You know your key signatures. You know that Bs should be flat in the key of F major. Since this is a B natural, it's been raised out of the key signature. Any interval that has been raised is augmented. So that is an augmented fourth. Okay? All right, I'm going to let you carry on with the rest of this page. If you have any questions, obviously let me know. Uh, and we'll carry on to the actual lesson, which is on the next page. All right, so this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, you know how to calculate intervals. You know what the word enharmonic means, because we've, we've, we've used it off and on for a few, for a few years now. Uh, enharmonic just means the other name for. Okay, so the, the little gray box in here talks about um, the different names for, for the notes. Um, an enharmonic note is one that sounds exa at exactly the, the same pitch as, the, as another. Okay, the same pitch. Okay, an enharmonic interval is one that sounds the same but has a different spelling of the notes. All right, the example they give us here is the augmented fourth of C to F sharp. Okay, how else can you write the note F sharp? Well, you can write it as a G flat. All right, so if I were to play for you those two notes on the piano... Right, and if I asked you what note, what interval that is, you could you had, certainly have two two possible answers. Okay, they're not the same on the page, though they are the same sonically. Okay, orally, they're enharmonically equivalent. If you were asked to write an augmented fourth in an examination and you wrote a diminished fifth, um, technically you'd be marked wrong, because if if I'm asking you to write an augmented fourth, I want to see this one, C to F sharp. If I ask you to write diminished fifth, I want to see this. Okay, there is a difference visually. There's not a difference in terms of the sound that is produced. All right. So as you move through this little short little worksheet, match the interval on the left with the enharmonic equivalent on the right. Certainly, um, the obvious is that the lower note would be the same. Okay, from one to the other, uh, but it would be an enharmonic upper note. Um, or possibly an enharmonic lower note as well. Uh, but one of the notes has to be exactly the same to make that work. And then finally at the bottom, uh, we're just going to have a uh, little more uh, practice. Name the given interval, rewrite it, changing the upper note enharmonically, then rename the interval. Okay, so it's again, it's two intervals, two sets of intervals that will sound the same, but will be written differently on the page. Okay, so there's your first lesson. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll carry on.